Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is BGFH back for another iOS video. And today we're going to continue our look at some accessibility features of iOS devices. Again, I'm working on my iPhone 5 here. And today what I want to show you is, you know, I talked a little bit about it in the first uh, accessibility overview video, but I want to go through a little bit about low vision as far as uh, zoom and, um, you, you know, like using low vision features. So if I go to settings again here, and remember, you can go to general, and I go all the way down to the bottom, and close to the bottom here, there's accessibility. And our second option here, or at least under the low vision area, is zoom. Now, I'm going to tap on it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I cannot, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you how this works on live video. I can turn it on and the app will record it. However, it's not going to show you the zoomed in view. It'll just show you the unmagnified view because I already have tested this. Um, earlier so but I did want to show <clears throat> I did want to show you where it is and I did want to kind of talk about a couple of the gestures so under where it says um, you know turn zoom on and off you got your little switch over there your little button tap it it'll turn it on tap it again it'll turn it off under there there's a description uh, of the couple of gestures that you are going to use so when zoom is enabled you are going to be able to pan around the screen and zoom in and out from anywhere so uh, it says that you you use three fingers and you double tap and hold and then as you're holding that second time you can slide your finger up or down to zoom in and out respectively it's kind of a weird gesture and I think one of the more odd ones to perform and it may not really make sense until you really see someone do it or until you kinda of try, try it and play with it a little bit yourself but you kinda of, you, you tap let go and then tap and hold and then, like I said, after the, the when you're holding it, you kind of slide up and down. And that's how you can zoom in and out. Once you find the right level of magnification that you're looking for, you just take three fingers and you pull the screen in, you know, you just kind of pull the screen in whatever direction to pan around the screen, just like you would if you were moving a mouse on a computer let's say using magic or zoom text or windows magnify or something like that um, you're basically just pulling the screen around just like if I go back here and I will when when I'm not doing anything with zoom and my phone is just working as a normal iPhone I just take one finger and pull up or pull down and I'm scrolling I just do the same thing I just do it with three fingers instead of one and that's really all there is to the Zoom app. You do your double tap and hold, and then drag up and down to zoom in and out. And then you take your three fingers to pan around and just slide the view around to uh, see what's on the screen. Keep in mind that you can also use this with the high contrast switch or the invert colors. Um, couple items down here under accessibility that I talked about in the first accessibility video and again I noticed when I turned that on briefly in the last video when I watched uh, when I watched the other video back I noticed that it didn't turn the uh, the video didn't capture the screen change even though it did appear differently on my screen so you know you can use those in color combinations so if you do want to see things in a darker background and magnified you can. What I can show you is I'm gonna back out of settings I'm gonna go into Safari really quick 
And right now, I, I have several tabs open. I'm looking at a giant bomb page right now. Uh, like I said, I follow their website a lot. And I'm going to... The problem is I don't think on this... On mobile web pages, I just discovered this actually today when doing a little prep work for these videos. I found out if you're on some of these mobile pages, you cannot do a pinch to zoom. So, but if I go to a full web page, like, you know, they don't have a mobile version and I'm just actually looking at the actual full web page that you would get on a computer. Let me go to, let's see, we got Giant Bomb, Joystick, joystick Weather, um, here we go. I was looking at, uh, I was checking out to see what is going to go on at the Minnesota State Fair this summer. Are there any good concerts going on? So, this is a regular web page that you would see on the computer and holy crap are those things tiny uh, you got all these little pictures here um, all the little text underneath I don't have a prayer of reading that so I don't have any accessibility features turned on and all I'm gonna do is take my two fingers you may you may have heard people refer to this gesture before pinch to zoom so I'm gonna take two fingers usually a thumb and like an index finger and I'm going to spread them apart so I'm pinching outward or I pinch inward make it smaller there we go and I can get pretty ginormous <laughs> wow uh, yeah that's pretty big and then I just take one finger to pan around I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because that is a little large so let's see what we've got here uh-huh yeah, a little, a little slow to kind of pan around, but um, I, I do use this feature sometimes because I don't really want to turn the whole zoom on, but I want to be able to zoom into a web page, especially like when I get an email and then I have to click a link to uh, verify something or whatever, and the web page that comes up is just super tiny. Um, that does come in handy for that. So, <laughs> okay, there we go, so I'm going to zoom out even further, I'm going to take my, and just pinch, and boom, it just locks in, goes back to our normal view, and I just take my one finger again, I can scroll, pinch to zoom, just pull it with one finger, there you go. Now, I will mention, like I said, this pinch to zoom does not work everywhere, so you can't rely on it all the time. Um, you can use it in email. You can use it in Safari. Uh, you can use it in some other browsers, I believe, if you get, like, Chrome or... <coughs> There's actually a few, of, a few other browsers out there. Um... But in a lot of other cases, uh, the pinch to zoom does not necessarily work, and that's why your system-wide zoom can be really helpful. Um, but at least I, I, what I really wanted to show you was that at least you know what zooming in on the device looked like. I uh, wasn't able to show you the full zoom app, but I could show you zooming in uh, in using just the regular pinch to zoom feature of some applications. To wrap up this uh, low, uh, video, that's really, as far as low vision features go, that's what the iPhone includes, you know, with no extra charge. You've got your pinch to zoom, you, and you've got your zoom, and your color, you know, your invert colors. Uh, you can, and you can use them in combination. Prior to iOS 6, you could not use VoiceOver and Zoom together. You had to choose one or the other, which did frustrate some users. Um, in iOS 6, you now can use Zoom and VoiceOver together, and it does actually work pretty well. I have tried it several times, and it does work pretty well. The gestures really don't conflict with, with each other and they do work pretty well together. Now, um, honestly, to wrap things, uh, really to wrap things up here, um, the way I use the iPhone, I think Zoom 
works really well on a tablet. So if you're using the iPad or the iPad Mini, you have a lot more screen real estate. You know, a 7-inch screen, a 10-inch screen. You have a lot more screen real estate, so it's much easier to use. My philosophy, or at least the way I use the iPhone and the iPod, because they have such smaller screens, a 3.5-inch 3, 3 screen if you have a 4S or earlier, or the 5-inch screen of the iPhone 5, 4-inch screen, which is what I'm using here. Um, basically, you know, you're using three fingers to pan around the screen. You're using, um, you know, you've only got so much screen real estate as it is, so, <laughs> you know, you got to do a lot. If you have to zoom in a fair amount to read it, you have to kind of pan around a lot, and it doesn't really seem all that efficient, to me at least. So, in the next series of videos, I'm going to kind of start showing you how to use VoiceOver. And this is actually how I prefer to use my iPhone a lot of the time. And I'll explain some of that as we get into VoiceOver. But basically what I'm doing is I can see there's icons. I can see there's a body of text on a web page. Or I can kind of see where things are in an email, whatever app I'm working in. But I can't read it. So... As a low vision user, it's actually really cool having the touch screen because then you can just tap on what you really want. Like what you see, you just tap on it and it tells you what it is. So we'll get further into the detail on that when we start looking into voiceover in the next accessibility video here. So that'll do it for the low vision features of iOS. Hope you found it helpful and until next time I will talk to you guys again soon.